Hey guys, it's been a while. So this happened to my son's Xbox. Um, yeah, this is our cat Gunner. And uh, he knocked it over and pretty much destroyed the hard drive. So we want to replace it with a solid state drive. And I ordered a 500 gigabyte solid state drive, which should be a whole lot faster than the mechanical drive that was in there. It was just a two and a half inch, um, you know, like a laptop type mechanical drive, 5400 RPM. And I have an adapter cable. In this case, some serial ATA to a USB 3 adapter cable. And so we want to replace the hard drive here to fix what this destroyed. And he's really good at destroying everything. He totally destroyed my son's Xbox. It's what, it's what he's good at. Gunner's got skills. So to mount this drive on my laptop so I can use the script, in this case, I just want to connect the cable here to the SATA drive. And you can see the connector. I'm, I'm going to have to like cut this off because I need the free hands, but I need the free hands. But you can see where it connects here. You can see how it connects. So I'm just going to connect the cable. So I have my new SSD solid state SATA or serial ATA drive. And I have my adapter cable. All right. So it's SATA on this side and USB on this side. And you can see how the connector to so you can see how the connector is here. So I just want to connect it in this case, match them up. I'm trying to do this in front of the camera so you can see. I don't have a great camera, it's just my cell phone, but so you can see that that it's connected now. Alright. And then I just want to plug this into the USB 3 port of my laptop. So I'm going to plug this into my laptop over here, and in this case, into my USB 3 port. Okay, there. Hey guys, um, for this, uh, I'm going to be following um, the procedure listed here on XFix's YouTube channel. And uh, he's just got a channel, you know, seems pretty, pretty knowledgeable here about all kinds of different Xbox repairs and things. Um, and I, I think I highly recommend this channel here. This is it's really nice. Um, but anyway, we're but actually formatting the drive. We're going to be following this example here. So if you will, you know, click underneath the channel to show, you know, some, some more of the details, he's got links to all the things that you'll need. So in this case, we need to get a partitioning script um, that he created. And that's because the Xbox One utilizes a proprietary partitioning, uh, you know, setup. There's like five different partitions, and they all have to have specific sizes and GUIDs and things. And this script will will kind of take care of that, or get rid of the headache of trying to take a new drive, or a replacement drive, or an upgrade drive, and make it something that is compatible that that will be accepted by the Xbox One. So we'll download that and. Uh, I'm going to download this for an offline system update. You'll just want to prepare uh, a flash drive in this case, format it as NTFS, and, and load these files on that drive for uh, an offline update to the Xbox One. If you don't have a compression utility, then you know, 7-Zip is, is a nice free compression utility. You'll need that. Um, the GUIDs, which will be inclu included in the packages, and he's just got some hardware here. Um, like here's a video on how to create the flash drive, and, and maybe I'll go through that too. And, um, in this case, I yeah I ordered a solid state drive, which would be considerably faster than the original drive, um, which was just a two and a half inch, fifty four hundred RPM laptop drive, and um, and also a, a cable, you know, a, a SATA to USB three connector cable. So all of these things here. So basically, I downloaded it, and let me. Basically, I downloaded the script, and I just want to go to the directory where I saved it. And in this case, I just wanted to extract it. So uh, using 7-Zip, I extracted it. And notice that there's Linux and Windows. In this case, I'm interested in this directory. I want to use the batch files and the scripts here in this directory. Okay, so you just want to remember that. So now with the drive plugged in, I can click on Cortana to look for the disk management and partitioning tool in Windows. 
Uh, or I could right click on the window icon and select run either way. And in this case, um, I want to type in dskmgmt.msc. It's just a quick, easy way to get to it. And in this case, notice it says initialize disk. Um, use the following partition stall for the selected disks. Uh, in this case, I want to click cancel. I don't, I don't want to do anything with defaults here. I want the script to do everything. Okay, so don't let don't let Windows go in there and do all of its automatic stuff because that's actually going to mess up the drive for the Xbox One. So notice here's my you know 500 gigabyte solid state drive or my SSD drive, and it's all unallocated. But Windows sees it. You know, Windows actually physically sees the drive. In this case, now that the drive's connected and I can see it, it's unallocated. And I have the script and it's it's decompressed. I'm ready to run it to set up the partitioning here. And you can either run it from an administrative command prompt or an administrative um, you know version of a Windows PowerShell. Now I'm gonna choose to run this from a DOS prompt. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna select command prompt with administrator privileges. I'm gonna type CD and paste again wherever I you know decompressed and unzip that file. And then I just need to go over to D, DIR to list the directory contents. And I want to run this file, create underscore xbox underscore drive dot bat. And we'll just give us a little more screen real estate here. Okay, so create, create um, xbox drive dot, all right. And it's going to go through and look for free drive letters. And, you know, in this case, I only have one physical drive in this laptop, but look, there's a C partition and a D partition that's at. So I have no problem as far as having free drive letters, but if, and there's no optical drive or anything, but if, if you've had a lot of drives or a media reader or something, you could have an issue here with drive letters, but most likely not. Um, it just kind of warns us here what it's going to do and press any key to continue. So I do. And then in this case, select Xbox One drive creation type, okay? So replace upgrade without a working original drive. And that's the what, what I want to do here because the cat destroyed the old one. We don't want to have a working one, so I have to completely replace it. But notice that there are other options. You could keep the original drive data. In this case, if you were you know basically cloning and you were just trying to, if you if, if the drive was still physically good, but say you wanted to upgrade from a 500 gig to like a two terabyte or something, then these other options may be useful for you as well. Backing up system update, but in this case, the only option I'm really interested in, since the original drive has been destroyed by the cat, is option A. Okay, and in this case, select target Xbox One drive, and you just want to be very careful that you so select the correct drive, okay? So notice I have I have two 500 gig drives that might seem confusing, but this is why I kind of kept the disk management tool open. Notice that my physical disk is zero. In this case, that's my operating system partition. That's my you know data partition. I want to make sure we don't do anything to this, right? What I want to target is this physical disk right here, the one that's unallocated. So disk one. So I want to select disk one. So enter two to cancel or use a disk number from the list above. So zero or one. In this case, I want to select zero, uh, one, excuse me, not zero, one. <laughs> I want to select one. Okay, and he's just got kind of some, you know, code to make sure that there's no C drive. This will erase all data on this disk. Continue, yes. And in this case, yes. Select the partition layout. So the standard Xbox is a 500 gig, and that's you know, we're upgrading from a mechanical to a solid state drive or SSD. But again, we could go with a larger drive if we had that option as well. So I'm going to choose A, and and then I'll try to drag these out where you can see what's going on. But don't touch that, don't want to mess with that, but notice up here all of these temporary drive letters and things that were created. Giving USB SATA devices 30 seconds to settle, please wait. Okay, now it's 
it's going through. Again, we don't want to click on anything Windows. And notice all of the partitions appear on, you know, in this case under the physical disk one now. And it's now formatting these partitions. This would go a lot faster now since it's a solid state than it would with the, uh, the original mechanical drive. But Drive X system update, pressing key to continue. Okay, so in this case, everything's done. And the script is finished. Okay. And again, um, you know, this popped up when it was initialized, but I don't want to allow Windows to do anything to this drive. So no, 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 cancel, 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 no Windows, bad. And bad, and cancel, and cancel and cancel and cancel all right so we're going to let the script do everything in this example so now our drive is done and we do want to make sure the GUIDs you know the default GUIDs are being used to match up with the current drive size but in this case we want to cleanly dismount and remove the drive so in Windows 10 I click over here click on the little USB icon I'm going to say eject JM uh, S5, so whatever yours is called. Let's see adapter name in this case. So notice that that physical drive now disappears from disk management. And now as far as the formatting part, we're done with that. And you can go ahead and exit out of the DOS prompt if you'd like. Now in this example, we'll need a USB flash drive. And uh, in this case, it's just a little Geek Squad 16 gigabyte uh, USB flash drive. It's not even USB. And we just want to go ahead and plug it in. And all right, so my USB port. And all set. Now we're ready to download the files, format the flash drive, and copy the files. Now with the USB drive loaded, we want to hop on over to, in this case, um, this is the Xbox support website. So it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash support dot xbox dot com forward slash en dash us forward slash xbox dash one forward slash console forward slash system dash updates dash solution okay and this will go over the procedure here and i'm going to click on i need to update my console offline and then choose your xbox my son in this case has an original xbox and it would go over the process here you know how you get it to do an offline update and hold it as far as holding the bind and eject button for 10 to 15 seconds. So you'll want to be familiar with this page. Again, I'll, I'll throw the link in, into the video, but I'm going to make a new tab. And I also want to download the latest offline update file, the latest OSU file. And that's going to be at http colon forward slash forward slash www.xbox.com forward slash xbox one forward slash OSU one. That's a pretty good sized file. So it's 5.1 gigabytes. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that um, download. And we have a ways to go here, but when that's done, um, we'll go ahead and decompress it and we'll format our flash drive and we'll load the files onto it. And at that point, all of our prep work will be done for the new hard drive and for the updates in the operating system. And then all we'll have to do is uh, take the Xbox One apart, remove the old drive and replace the new one. So in this case, uh, the file's finished downloading, and uh, I can extract it here and copy it to the flash drive after I format it, or I could just extract it directly to the flash drive. In this case, my USB drive, the flash drive, is, is you know plugged in right here. It's mounted as F, and uh, I'm just going to get rid of all this is old stuff I, I want to get rid of. So in this case, I'm going to right click and I want to select Format, and we don't want FAT32. We want to make sure that it's NTFS. My format is NTFS, and I'll just leave it. Um, I'll 
I'll just call it. It doesn't really matter what you label it. Change the label. And I'll say OK. So all that data is going to get wiped and destroyed. And I'll have a reformatted USB flash drive. OK. And now that it's formatted, here I have an Xbox update F. Um, and I just want to extract the contents of this file. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and extract it to its own directory. You can also extract it directly to the flash drive if, if you want to click through all the menu options, but I don't know, I'm just going to avoid all that and just that way I can copy and paste. So that, the contents of this file was 5.3 gig um, and extracted, it is 5.17 gig. Huh, oh, go figure. Alrighty then. <laughs> in this case, notice we have all of these data files and things in here. So I want to take this entire folder. Come over here, and I'm just going to paste it onto the flash drive. And this will take a while. Okay, and so now I can see that here are the contents extracted to my USB flash drive. I just want to cleanly dismount it, or unmount it. And now it's time to take apart the Xbox and replace the drive. So, because this happened, yeah, this, Gunner, because of this, yeah, hey, you, Gunner, Destructo, we now need to take our Xbox apart, and so that's our next step. So, now we want to disassemble our Xbox, and um, the first thing we want to do on the Xbox, at least on the uh, traditional original Xbox, is this strip here. In this case, where the, the USB port is, right, on this side, and basically we just want to remove this panel, and gently take out the straight edge screw screwdriver, and just kind of gently apply a little bit of pressure. You don't want to break the plastic tabs that hold it, but... I'm going to kind of get them off and then pull this on it and then you can just kind of wiggle it off and then that piece comes off there. So I'm going to put that over here. Okay. And then there's a plastic tab that goes here that you'll just slide forward this way and there, there's some screws you would remove but it looks like my son has already removed that for us. So <laughs> I don't have to do that but you, you would have to pull out two screws perhaps and then slide that plastic piece over. Okay. No, Gunner. No, 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 no. Stop. No. No. <sighs> Cat's getting ready to jump on the camera and knock over the tripod. He's really good at breaking things. Breaking Xboxes, breaking cameras. It's just what he's skilled at. Gunner? No. No. Gunner, no. No. So now that we've done all that, we want to actually take the Xbox apart, okay? And it depends on the kind of Xbox that you have. But you'll want to start on the side. In this case, if you have a traditional, like the original Xbox with the optical drive, start on the side where this panel is, where the optical drive is, okay? And I, I want to remove this here. And so what I'm going to do is just put my finger here. And I have just a straight edge tool, a screwdriver. Or you can use a guitar pick if you have a plastic guitar pick. That's even better sometimes. It's less likely to chip the plastic. And just apply light pressure. And then as I'm pulling with this hand, I'm going to go here and... Seriously, what's wrong with, like, you know, four screws? And who came up with this idea of making this plastic case like this? I don't know, but you can just take your straight edge and very gently, you, know, you don't want to break off the plastic tabs, but... And then this panel comes off. Okay. I'll put that over here now. 
there is normally a plastic piece right here that you would slide forward. You'd pull two screws and you'd slide that piece forward. But it looks like my son got to it before I did, so <laughs> that piece is gone. Um, now the rest of this is kind of a little bit tricky. Um, with my finger and my hand, my thumb like this and my finger, my index finger like that, I want to push this way and pull this way at the same time, right? So opposite, you understand what I'm saying? So like, like this, I wanna pull down and push up at the same time, there, like that, okay? See how it kind of cracks there? And now I wanna take my straight edge tool. Again, an ideal tool for this would be a plastic guitar pick. And hard to believe I don't have one. I have three guitars and I can't find a guitar pick. Anyway, so I'm gonna use this tool very carefully, hopefully not to check the plastic. And while applying light pressure there, I want to go on the back and also if you do this you're avoiding your warranty which this thing's so old and it's broken anyway so i don't not worried about that but if, if you're worried about that you you might not want to open the case because it's going to break the seal there's a seal right here but so i take my straight edge tool i'm just going to go and just kind of lightly and gently and then and I'm, I'm applying pressure with my hand right here at the same time okay so and I'm just taking my straight edge tool and there's these plastic tabs in here and I just want to be careful not to, if possible, not to crack the tab, but you have to put enough pressure on it to actually pry it loose. And see, in this case, don't, don't be afraid by that sound, but that's just these plastic tabs releasing on the back here. Okay, and then, and then on the side here, okay, so, and I'm going to just pull, I'm pulling light pressure on the side, there's one more tab that I need to clear, okay. No, there are all the tabs and this comes out now. Be very, very careful at this point because there is a ribbon cable that connects this um, and it's it's so short. I don't know why they made it so short. I think they just tried on purpose to make this as non-user friendly as possible so that you'd go out and buy a new Xbox instead of trying to repair it or at least go through them. But see how I, I lift it this way because you don't you don't want to break this ribbon cable because that's the power button, the touch button, all right? But there is a ribbon cable here, and I'll try to rotate this. I don't, I don't know how good, I'm just using my cell phone here, so I don't know how good you'd be able to see this, but. And what I wanna do, I need to, I need to take a small screwdriver, in this case it's straight edge. There's a plastic piece, okay? And I'm pushing on the plastic, can you see? I'm just gently, very gently pushing this plastic piece here. And let me... There, okay. So see, this is the ribbon cable here. This is the ribbon cable. You just want to be careful not to tear that or put too much force on it. Okay, so I remove that piece now. Okay, and there's a few more pieces that we'll need to remove here. In this case, the um the Wi-Fi module, and it's just connected by this wire from here to here. And um, for that. Just gonna use a star tool. Um, it's just an inexpensive set of, of like laptop computer tools. And I've used it to fix Nintendo DS's and all kinds of things that I've broken over the years for my kids. But 
So I want to pull these screws here. Let's make sure we don't lose anything. And I would recommend a safe place to keep them. I'm, I'm going to keep them in this box here. They're very tiny and could get lost very easy. Again, it seems like they could have made this a bit more user friendly in terms of taking things apart, but you know, well. And this here, just this little clip cable. This is the Wi Fi cable. All right. And, um, And then this is a connector. You see this little rectangular connector here? Goes here. So remove that. That is the Wi Fi module. And then this here for the little piezo speaker. Same thing, there's a ribbon cable here. And in the same way that I had to press against this, let me change my bed out again just to show you. The same way that I had to, this was down, and I had to lift it up, guys, in order to insert the ribbon cable. All right. In the same way, I want to remove this, and if I gently apply a little bit of pressure there, then I can remove that for the speaker. Okay. So we want to disconnect these cables here, so that we can then, um, and then this. This also comes off the other end. And that way we can we can actually take the top off once we unscrew it. Okay. So I'm gonna switch my bits out again. And um, in this case, we want to go ahead and pull all of the screws that are holding this panel down here. And I'm going to pull all of these out of the edge. them as we go. I think there were nine. One, one, two, three, four, five. because I've carefully removed the panels and then there's one more ribbon cable that you can remove if you want to take the panel off completely. Again, you would just take like a, a straight edge screwdriver or tool and you could pry that out, but I could probably get away, I could probably get away with uh, not removing that cable. As long as you guys can see what I'm up to, you see what I'm doing. That's just gonna be awkward. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and remove that cable as well. And I won't have to sit here and hold this and it won't be in the way. But there's just one more little ribbon cable here. And again we just want to very carefully um, and gently remove that. And then this whole piece comes off with the cables and everything like that, like so. Okay. And you can see inside the Xbox, it's it's basically a, typically a computer. You got a, a large cooling fan, heatsink, GPU. There's the optical drive. 
it's just a standard two and a half inch laptop drive. In this case, it's a slow 5400 RPM mechanical drive. And here's a standard SATA cable, although there is a uh, sort of a proprietary Xbox adapter, a little, little clip-on thing here. Okay. And so we'll want to pull this out. I'm just going to... And there's actually, there's a there's some little plastic pens down here, so you have to kind of really pull this out. So this, this, this whole thing here just sits in there. These pens here. And they sit down there on the main board. Things got kind of, you know, kind of get clamped down, but I'm going to want to remove this so that I can then unclip this and we'll replace it with, replace this, this bad damaged mechanical drive with our new solid state drive when we do that. Okay, segment two. So I've got our hard drive out and I'm going to switch over again to my starter tool. And holding this upside down, I'm going to pull these four screws out of the caddy here. And we're going to have space to put these here. Okay. And two more to go. One more to go. Player. And what I want to do is just slide this out, right? So here's our bad, here's our old mechanical bad uh, two and a half inch drive. And if you want to, you can disconnect the SATA cable and the power cable here, but I, I didn't really need to. Have to move the drive anyway. So here's the solid state drive that we formatted using the special script. And that interesting proprietary formatting, right? And so what I want to do is line up the connectors on the drive and the connector in this case. Just make sure that you orient things properly or correct correctly. And then I want to take this drive and clip it in. And then I will just line up the screws and screw the new drive in where the old drive was. So we'll put those screws back now. And um, using our start tool. And usually what I do is I go diagonal. Kind of helps balance things as opposed to like, you know, screwing things all on one side. I, I don't know, that's not rocket science. <laughs> I know, but I don't know. I don't seem to have too much luck if I do everything on one side. So I try to like go on opposite sides when I push you with these tiny teeny screws here. I can't even see them. Oh I miss the days when I was younger and my eyesight was better. Soon I'll be wearing some crazy set of binoculars or something. <sighs> I had to get progressives last year. Yeah, my first pair of old lady glasses. That was no fun. Uh, that's sort of a... That's when you know you're getting old and you can't use a single prescription anymore. And now if I don't look at something just right, depending on the angle, then it's all blurry, you know? Because it's like I have a different prescription down and another prescription up. Welcome to old age, Carly. Yay! Alright. And I'm going to pop this little screw in here. Oh, my son, my poor son. He's, he's been heartbroken since his Xbox has been broken by the cat. I'm surprised he forgave the cat. It was almost an unforgivable offense, you know? 
He loved that cat. I loved it. I don't think I've ever loved a cat quite as much as I love Garner. I've never had a cat that's quite as destructive as him either. Again, you just want to line up these plastic tabs. You'll see the holes. And it just kind of sits down in there. And you'll see that it's snug. And what happens is when you screw the cap on, it's going to hold all that in, okay? So make sure your cables are on nice and snug. And now we're going to take our top cap here and remember how it was oriented in this case that the Wi-Fi unit was here the piezo speaker and the cable and then the ribbon cable that clips in goes down here okay again here's the ribbon cable I don't know if you could see that well before so before I put it together I'll try to I'll try to give you guys a glimpse and show you so here's where we want to connect it right here you guys can see right there okay All right, all of this to get out of buying a new Xbox. Let's see if it was all worth it. Indeed. screws back in and I don't know, I'm going to try to start in the middle if I can. And then I just go corner to corner. Or, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. This is not something you don't already. I just, I'm trying to make conversation. What else are we going to talk about? I was, do you guys, do you guys like Because Science? It's like one of my new favorite YouTube channels. I love this guy. He's talking about why Link one of my favorite video games of all time, Zelda, all of them, all the Zelda games, Breath of the Wild, you name them, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, uh, Skyward Sword, whatever, Ocarina of Time, but, but he's talking about why he was was the, maybe one of the greatest superheroes of, of all time. I, I can't argue with that, but uh, just, just say, let's see here. All right, let's go. That is, all right, there we go. Pop one down in the middle there, and everywhere there's a triangle. That is everything down where the cooling fan is. I still have to like take my glasses off sometimes to see what the heck I'm looking at. Miss the days on one prescription. Single vision. Wait, those are the days.
I'm gonna take these off for right now because they're really interfering with my ability. To see. Believe it or not, those were progressives. C3, that's what I was looking for right there. Uh. Okay, there we go. Alright, all these guys are out. Okay. Put that right there. And let's go ahead and take our Wi-Fi module. I'm gonna pop that back on via this connector here. Okay. Is like so and we need to take our two little Wi-Fi screws and put those back in to secure the Wi-Fi module probably have an easier time with this than I do I mean if you have decent eyesight <laughs> Snug, but not too tight. All right, and now I'm gonna carefully connect this connector. There's a little pin here. And again, I'm gonna tape these off. Zoom in really good here. A little pin here. Clip there. That's what I wanted. It's, I know it's nice on there, nice and snug. And I'm going to take the piezo and I'm going to plug that back in. And a little bit of help here, so I'm going to go back to my straight edge. Just kind of very gently guide this back in. Okay. And now I have to connect the other end, in this case the other Wi-Fi cable. And once again, let me take these off. Oh, wow. Don't know what you got until it's gone. You don't miss your nice, good eyesight. And so you have to wear old lady glasses. Okay. <laughs> all right, so everything is connected. Make sure all the ribbon cables are connected, all the screws are in. No missing parts and pieces and whatnot. Now the tricky part. Now we have to um, get this ribbon cable. We have to angle this back down on the case. We have to get this ribbon cable to connect back into this connector here. Again, let me show you. I'll show you how it looks. I'll try to give you a close up. So this is where the ribbon cable connects and this slides out very, very gently. Be very careful. Don't apply it too much first, but just you just gently push that out a little bit with a straight edge. You can take the ribbon cable out and the ribbon cable has lots of metal contacts. So you'll slide it back in and then when you slide it back in, then you'll gently push this back and it clamps down on the ribbon cable to hold it in. Why they did this or why they couldn't have given you like an inch of slack, I don't know. Great thinking, Microsoft. <laughs> Guess they didn't want any user serviceable parts. I mean, who knows? Who really knows? All right. For me, this is a bit tricky. Kind of turn it. I'm trying to orient it towards you guys, but I'm just gonna have to orient this 
the only there's so little slack here on this cable <laughs> again thank you microsoft not So with the ribbon cable connected here, you can see how precariously short it is. All right, but with that connected, and with that, being careful not to disconnect the piezo or the, the Wi-Fi cable there. I want to try it, or the ribbon cable for the power button. I want to try to maneuver things back into place. With all the ribbon cables connected, and this, this is like some crazy weird voodoo here, but I want to angle this in a little bit and with both my hands try to float it so I can go down and yet somehow fit these things in, these into the tongue and groove sections. Okay, so I want to try to do that with the front panel. Uh, okay, so... After a lot of angling, I got it back together. I had to remove this front panel piece too. But you just find a, the best way that works for you. It's not a technical issue, just a plastic case, but just figuring out how to angle the, all those plastic tabs. And it's probably the biggest pain of this whole project, just trying to put the case back together. <laughs> so we want to replace the side piece on this side. And uh, just pops right in. Okay, here we go. Now we're ready to try booting up with our new hard drive and our flash drive for an online update. Okay, so now with the Xbox hooked up, I'm gonna power it up. And in this case, I wanna go here to troubleshoot and I want to choose reset this Xbox. And then in this case, we need to do a master reset because the old hard drive was destroyed by the cat. So we've got to, you know, completely reset things with the new drive. But this drive will go a whole lot faster. So I'm going to say remove everything. And it's going to go into the boot screen. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go troubleshoot. And this time I'm going to go ahead and stick my USB key in here. Flash drive. Alright, so notice the offline system update was grayed out and now I have that option available. So I'm going to choose offline system update. And this is just the latest um, offline update file that I downloaded from Microsoft Xbox, the, the website. This is my son. He's listening to... What are you listening to? This is going on YouTube, so if you don't want to be on YouTube, I can. Oh. <laughs> oh man, this is so much faster. Fingers crossed, it's going to be blazing fast, dude. It's going to be like so much faster. Nice. And it rebooted after the verification was complete. And now it's applying the update. Man, I'm telling you, compared to that old 5400 mechanical drive, this SSD is lightning fast.
Well, this is a good sign. We never really made it this far before on the bad drive. <laughs> yeah, cool. And this will have a more modern, um, it's not like the latest updates and OS features. Okay. And now I'm just going to go through and do the setup. English, US. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the uh, wireless. Carly Net 5.0. And, uh, okay. And it looks like the project was a success. And the sucker runs a whole lot faster now on that SSD. Okay, I hope this helps somebody.